guys, you're welcome back with you guys. I'm feeling big, my name is Kukura. So, this Muslim asks a pastor, why is this religion wrong? Why is this religion that is Islam wrong? So, let's check it out, guys. Jesus is a prophet, Prophet Isa, wow. within mm -hmm. the Muslim culture. Mm -hmm. So, as a Muslim, like, we respect other religions. We call them people of the book. Mm -hmm. If you respect another religion, there's no wrong religion in that essence like from your standpoint because i am muslim because i have an imam who is not a messenger but an interpreter mm -hmm. am i is my religion wrong or askew in any context i have the utmost respect for muhammad in the way after growing up as an orphan in poverty he makes one of the five pillars almsgiving giving to the poor I respect that highly. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Secondly, I respect Muhammad for the way he led the Arab people out of polytheism into monotheism. I think that's outstanding. Obviously, where I disagree with Muhammad is regarding the identity of Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus? Obviously, the Quran teaches that Jesus is not God. He's a good prophet. Obviously, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John insist Jesus claimed to be God. And he did things as God. He accepted the worship of people as being an appropriate response to him. So obviously, my question from my Muslim friends is, are you sure that Jesus is just a prophet? Obviously, Muhammad was not born until 500 years after Christ, so he never met Jesus. The eyewitnesses insisted Jesus claimed to be God. He accepted worship as appropriate. So who is Jesus? I mean, if I look at the lessons of Jesus, like in my room, I have the Bible and then I have the Quran. And I've legitimately started reading both of them and pretty much just putting on my own synthesis as to the comparisons between the two. Mm -hmm. And as you go through these lessons, you see they are very similar mm -hmm. in more than one manner and probably every single matter except for the fact that Jesus is God or Jesus is not God and he is a prophet. I think that's probably the start, like the, the largest difference between the two. But if I'm taking those lessons that Jesus gave as my, a prophet to me, as a God to you, if I take those lessons and I follow them properly, except for the part about Jesus being a God, why would that make me incorrect? And if I am incorrect, does that put me at a lesser heaven or to a hell rather than going to where every, like, I guess, proper Christian would go? Oh, well, proper Christians deserve to go to hell. The only reason a Christian goes to heaven is because they realize I deserve hell, but Christ bled and died on a cross for my sin, and I've accepted his sacrifice for me. So proper Christians don't go to heaven because they're proper people. All right? It's all grace. Now, you see, that is a basic contradiction between Islam and Christianity. You know, in Islam, you have to fi follow the five pillars, and you better do it well. And if you do it well, you go to heaven. And if you don't do it well, you go to hell. Jesus Christ says, no, you don't go to heaven by following the Ten Commandments or by following the Sermon on the Mount. You go to heaven because you realize, I am in desperate need of God's forgiveness, His mercy, His grace, and I throw myself upon Christ for that forgiveness, for that grace. You see, so you can't have it both ways. Either heaven is something that we earn and we deserve because we've kept the rules, or heaven is a gift that God gives us by grace. And so, as a Muslim, and so I'm a Shia, Ismaili, Imam, and Nizai Muslim. I'm about 1% of the whole Muslim population. I'm a really small sect. And the very first line in the Quran, or anything that any of our prayers is, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. And essentially the way that we've been taught that um, from our Imam, the interpreter, um, mm -hmm. Khan the fourth, mm -hmm. the way it works out is, man will sin, right? Like, it's, it, like, it's gonna happen no matter what. And the way that we've been taught, it, it is our goal to continuously approach and try to better ourselves. And we do need God for that forgiveness. And I, to me, it seems like what, um, what you preach is the same thing that I've been preached to my whole life. Hmm. Okay, except that the question is, how does God forgive? Remember, God is unchanging, right? Correct. So you and I both agree, God is unchanging. Well, then if God is unchanging, how does he forgive me for my evil, for my wrongdoing? That's where the cross of Christ is so crucial. Because Christ claims that the evil that I have done has to be punished, because God is just. And forgiveness cannot contradict justice. God's not schizophrenic. At the cross, Christ lays down his life to absorb the just penalty for our wrongdoing thereby offering us the option of forgiveness if we choose it. See, so, obviously, in the Quran, 
the idea of Christ going to the cross is unacceptable because God would never allow a good prophet to die such a horrible death, right? But in the Gospels what we have is, they're not biographies. They focus on this cruel, crass death of Christ on a cross. Why do they focus on that? Because Jesus insisted that it's his death on the cross that's the linchpin. It's the key to reconciliation with God. It's the way God forgives us by absorbing the penalty for our sin, thereby offering us forgiveness. So his justice is honored, and he offers mercy, forgiveness. So, I guess, it's kind of like, in closing, right? My fear, the reason I ask this question is because my fear is, as a Muslim, if I don't do the proper things, and if I'm not the right religion, say I'm not, like, say being Christianity is the right religion, and, like, taking Jesus in, if that is the right thing, but I don't believe it, am I going to hell? And if I don't want to go to hell, should I convert? And if I convert and I do it out of fear, am I still going to heaven because I do it for the wrong reasons? Rather than for forgiveness, I do it for fear? Okay, good question. All right, we have to be brutally honest with each other. If Muhammad spoke the truth, I am going to hell. Because I don't worship Allah, I don't accept Muhammad as his prophet. So I'm going to hell. If Jesus Christ spoke the truth, and I reject Christ, his death on the cross, his deity, then I'm going to hell. So in this case, you're going to hell and I'm going to hell from each other's standpoints, correct? Correct. All right. According to Muhammad, I am going to hell. According to Jesus Christ, I'm anybody who rejects him is going to spend eternity separate from him. That'll be hell. So, because we're thinking human beings, we had better ask ourselves, what is the truth? And we better follow the evidence. And if the evidence is that Muhammad speaks the truth, we better follow Muhammad. If the evidence is Jesus Christ spoke the truth, we better follow Jesus Christ. Or if the evidence is Siddhartha Gautama Buddha or the avatars of Hinduism spoke the truth, we better follow the evidence. Or if the evidence is that there is no God, we better be atheist. So then how do we tell, like, between Christianity and Muslim, uh, Islam specifically, all we have to compare are these two books, correct? We have these two books, we have scriptures that follow both of them. Good. We have a history that comes with both of them. Good. How do we know which one's evidence is more factual? How do we know which one's is more true? How do I know which one to follow yep. and not end up in the wrong place? Because that is Good. my fear. Good. Excellent question. First point. We better study both books to find out are they accurate or not. Which is what I've begun doing. Good. And I think the evidence is clear. The Quran is reliable. The Quran has been carefully preserved over the past 1500 years. If anybody wants to try and maintain that the Quran is in inaccurate, they're out to lunch. I am convinced. The evidence is very carefully preserved over the past 1500 years. You have a very accurate presentation of what Muhammad taught. The same thing is true with the Gospels. Very carefully recorded a plethora of manuscript evidence to support the reliability. Okay, so we've got two very accurate books, the Quran and the Gospels. Now obviously they contradict each other, although there are similarities. Definitely. A lot of similarities, but also contradictions. So now the bottom line question is, does the evidence point to the fact that you can trust Muhammad to speak the truth, or does the evidence point to Jesus Christ being trustworthy? Now, here's how I would go about that. Examine life, style. How did Jesus treat women? How did Muhammad treat women? How did Jesus treat his enemies? How did Muhammad treat his enemies? Those types of questions. Lifestyle. Second question, ethical teaching. What are the ethical teachings of Muhammad? What are the ethical teachings of Christ? Are there internal contradictions? Or is there an internal consistency? Third question, how did they die? Obviously, in the Gospels, Jesus dies an excruciatingly painful death, forgiving his enemies. Obviously, that demands my respect. Fourth question, what happens after they die? Obviously in the Gospels you have an historical resurrection of Christ. And you have eyewitnesses who see him risen from the dead. Well, <coughs> I really enjoy this conversation, guys. I love where the man is dissecting the Quran at the same time the Bible, letting me understand what the Bible says about Jesus, what the Quran says about Muhammad, what he believes in the Quran, and what he thinks, you know, I just love how he's explaining how he's, he's trying to let the man, the Muslim man understand that your religion is not a wrong religion, but it is seen in different dimension. The way things are done in the Bible, 
or things were done in the Bible. It's different from the way some things were done in the Quran. And there's some things that are in the Quran and not in the Bible. And he, you know, he explained more about Jesus Christ and Prophet Muhammad and, you know, what he likes about these two. I just enjoyed his you know, explanation on this topic. It was beautiful and very lovely. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.